All right, jazz fans, this is KKGO bringing you the best of jazz on the radio today. This broadcast is brought to you by Drums and Percussion Magazine in Germany, one of the finest drum mags on the planet today. In this broadcast, we're going to be talking about great stuff like long-term goals, middle-term goals, and short-term goals. Also, we're going to be talking about some great gear that you can use, and then your ability to not follow trends, be your own guy. In conclusion, we're going to have our closing thoughts here. We're broadcasting all over the world today. Here we go. Let's get right into it. Don't be jive. Don't copy. Be your own man. Find your own voice in jazz. Hey folks, welcome to the next workshop for Drums and Percussion Magazine. In this workshop, we're going to talk about finding your own voice in jazz. There's a saying that goes, you are what you eat. In music, you are what you hear. Okay, part of finding your own voice is really about finding yourself, what you want to do as an artist. The reason I'm here at this place in particular is because this is a place I come to a lot to meditate, to be inspired, to find out what I really want to do, what the next thing I want to say, you know, in music is, and and to be inspired to write, to play better, to do whatever I have to do in music and art in general. And that's a very important thing. To find your own voice, especially in jazz, you really, really need to decide what it is you want to do. To find your own voice, you're gonna need a lot of dedication and patience. Everything you've seen in your life, everything you've heard, everything you've done, everyone you've met, (laughs) every place that you've been, is going to be a factor in your voice in music, especially in jazz, because it's so expressive. All these things form a concoction of what is the only thing that it's not, that's not, no one else is able to copy in the world. That's you. This is something you really want to develop to its full potential, because it's one of, it's what's going to separate you from everyone else. It's an absolute necessity to do this because the last thing you want to do, especially in jazz, is be a clone of someone else. Not only, not only that, that's like a minor point. But the thing is, if you want to contribute to the music, if you want to truly be a part of it, you're going to have to find a way to say something in your way, the way you want. That's the thing that stood out. Uh, about Charlie Parker, about Miles, about Elvin Jones, about everybody that's made history and music. You have to have your own voice, your own way of saying things. And so the process for that, for musicians, is just this. Like I said before, take all the experiences you've had so far in your life and start putting it all together. The next thing you're going to want to do is check out other players okay if you haven't checked out elvin jones for example you really need to check him out because he's like probably pretty much a gold standard in jazz you need to check out all the drummers from miles davis you need to check out contemporary drummers like bill stewart uh gary novak you know all guys that really have a, a particular voice and something to say that's really all their own so that you can know where the limits are and what's being done right now and what's been done yesterday. This unity of everything you've heard is going to help you to bring your own voice out in your playing. One of the next things to think about is what gear you're going to play. Okay, I know a lot of people say, you know, there was great drummers playing on crummy gear and they made it their own. Yes, yes, but... It really helps to have a particular sound, a great sound, when you go to play, when you go to record. That's really going to help you and to inspire you. When I developed my cymbals with Sabian, for example, I had a clear vision in my head 
about what they should sound like. And once that came to life, once that manifested in the physical world, my playing changed. Why? Because the sound I heard, then I, I could integrate that sound into my playing in a beautiful way. So, so gear does matter, okay? Especially when you're talking about jazz. Jazz has a particular sound to it which other players want to hear out of you, okay, as a drummer. You can't take like a, you know, a 20-inch a ping a ride to <laughs> a super hard ride for heavy metal to a jazz gig. It just doesn't work like that. So part of your sound is having the appropriate gear and gear that's going to inspire you, okay? Transcription is a major issue. Transcription is very important because it gives you insight into players' heads, directly into their creative output, right? I'm not saying that you need to transcribe and play exactly what you transcribe. That's a big mistake. The thing is, you have to know where these guys are coming from, where people are coming from, so that you can have a base, okay? Another reason to do it is that so you don't repeat what they've done. If you quote like Tony Williams, people are going to tell every, every jazz person in the world, every jazz drummer especially, knows Tony's stuff. So if you like copy him, there's no point in that at all. And you'll probably get called out, oh, that guy's copying, you know, Tony Williams. That's the Tony Williams phrase or whatever. If you're doing a tribute to Tony Williams, that's another thing. Personally, you know, I, I would much rather invest my time into finding my own voice and being able to express what I want to say the way I want to say it. What happens when you see drummers live? It like goes into your stomach, okay? When you watch on video, it only goes into your brain and your eyes. But when you see someone live, it goes into your chest, into your stomach. It's a completely different thing. This kind of thing is what makes you really become aware of how the balance on the kit uh, different guys have different balances, you know, how they play the, the cymbal, how they interact. Like on a live uh, gig, <laughs> things are way different. And the only way you're going to find your own voice is by being able to appreciate this, uh, this uh, you know, this music live. It's unbelievably helpful. It's really helpful when you go see people live. I can't recommend you know, it's like if you're a carpenter and you don't go into a wood shop, okay? You have to go to live concerts as much as possible. My next piece of advice, my next thoughts are don't follow trends. When you follow trends, you're just wasting time that could be dedicated to finding your own voice. Remember on the piano player clips and the bass player clips that we had in previous workshops? The thing that they value the most is somebody that brings their own voice to the music. When you copy someone, when you follow a trend, you do the latest trend in drumming, you're just completely spinning your wheels. Nobody wants to hear that. They want to hear you. You are the trend. You should be the trend, okay? So when you put effort into things that, that, uh, that are sidestepping your main goal, that's really a bad thing. Don't follow trends. The guys that follow trends end up sounding like someone else that is making the trends. Okay? In conclusion, I'd like to say that do, maybe do this exercise. Do what I do. Come out to places that inspire you. Look at this view right now. I'm just going to step aside. It's beautiful. Look at this little pond area here. The sunset is right there. Okay, the sun's uh, setting. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's uh, awe-inspiring to watch. The sea is, is amazing. It's green, blue color. It's just amazing. You have to find yourself to find your own voice. Okay? Look in the mirror. Go wherever your mirror is and look inside the mirror. <laughs> look into the mirror. And then look in your eyes and say, who is this person? What do I want to say in music? What you are going to say in music is going to make music history. When you repeat what somebody else has said, you're just saying what they've said. 
okay? Finding your own voice, again, is the most important task you can do. It's not only in jazz, in every, in every genre. So that's the best advice I can give you. Find yourself, find what you want to do, find what you want to say. Dig deep so that you know what the music is all about, especially jazz, it has such an amazing, rich history. You have to be a part of it. You have to be a total jazz fan. You have to love it, okay? The next thing, transcription. Transcribe things. Transcribe until you turn blue as much as you can so that you can get into the head, you can get into the thoughts of people who have done it in the past or are doing it right now. I'm not saying play like them. I'm not saying play the things you've transcribed, but just know their minds. Go to live concerts. Absolutely have to go to live concerts. You have to go experience music live. You have to feel it in your chest and your stomach. You have to see every detail. When I was a kid, I used to sit next to my teacher at gigs and at rehearsals. I would, I would help him carry his drums to rehearsals and then to, to the gigs. And I'd sit right next to him as close as possible. And the sweat would be dripping off him and then it hit me. And <laughs> it's, like, it's like, that's what you need to do. You know, you need to be a part of it. It needs to be in your life big time. You have to, you can't sit there with a book, you know, whatever independence book and phrase book and expect to be a jazzer. You know, you have to be a part of it. You have to live it. You have to live through the music and it has to be a thing that you love. Gear. Make sure you've got the right gear that sounds great. The best gear that you can get a ha your hands on and develop a touch and a feel that brings the best out of that gear so that your voice can be heard through it. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a very important video. Remember, all the guys said, the thing that they value the most out of a player is to hear their own voice in the music. That's what's gonna separate the music from every other song that's ever been done. That's what's gonna separate you. That's what's gonna separate you as an artist, okay? Thanks for watching. See you next time.